guys today i have dominic d'angelica he is a model actor normally new yorkers run to la to become actors he's gone from la to new york and he's going to tell us his story uh dominic say hello to everybody and tell us a little bit about yourself uh, my name is dominic d'angelica i come from a very small town in northern california called jackson growing up there there was about five thousand people and it was just you know a really small country town um i ended up moving out to new york in 2015 along with my twin brother and we wanted to make our dreams come true we were always i was always into the modeling acting world it was my passion my dream to become a model actor and i you know i got i got tired of my small town and ended up selling my car and moving all the way to New York and just starting out brand new. We speak a lot about actors and and models and and what they do and when they come to New York what happens and you know why they stay and all that all the struggles. Why didn't you just go to LA? You are from there, right? Why come to New York? I was at my friend's wedding and his aunt came up and talked to me. I was like, hey, I remember you when you were a little kid. Why are you still in this small town? And I was like, you know, I don't really know why. Like, I want to. And she was like, what do you want to do? I'm like, honestly, I want to like be a model. I want to be on TV. And like, I just don't know how to get there. And she was like, all right, we'll take my number down and I'll connect you. She had a friend, a photographer named James Garahan out of San Francisco, and he had friends in New York. So I took her number down and after the wedding, I texted her and I said, hey, Deb, you know, I would love to talk about, you know, the modeling and meeting this photographer and what we can do to get started. So I, uh, she had us come down to Petaluma. She had me and my brother come down to Petaluma, which is near Santa Rosa. And she set up this whole like shoot for us to make it seem like it was real and, you know, had the clothes for us, the photographer, the, the different locations. And that was our very first photo shoot ever. And then we had dinner with the photographer that night. And he was like, hey, you guys are great. Wow. Like, I'm going to send your photos to my friend Sophie Sutton, who's in New York. And she was an actress model in New York. And, you know, me and my brother didn't know anyone out here. We have family on the East Coast, but that's in Connecticut. We never been to New York at that point. And so he sent our photos to this lady. And she was like, all right, like, let me, uh, let me look around, see what I can do for them. Let's have them come out to New York and I'll show them around, I'll introduce them to people. And this is like 2013. And so we got sent to, we were going to Connecticut that summer to see our grandparents. So while we were out there, we made plans to you come- You and your brother. Yeah, me and my twin. I see. We did everything together coming out here. I wasn't alone, but <laughs> I kept him out here. So we go to Connecticut and then we make these plans to go to New York. And me and my brother, I'm excited. I'm like, my brother's name's Stefan. I'm like, Steph, like, let's go do this. We're going to make it happen. So we get to New York. We meet Sophie Sutton. She's amazing. She uh, takes us around New York, shows us, you know, how to pose a little bit, uh, what type of clothes we need for the shoots that we're going to be doing and all this. She put us in a hotel. And me and my brother were like, oh, this is crazy. Like, what? We want to do more of this. So we ended up. She had a couple of test shoots lined up for us. She was doing a lot of the photos. And then we had the, the ph photographs that uh, in California that that photographer took of us as well. So we had a little small book built that we just started. And then she started making us appointments, different modeling agencies, you know, Wilhelmina, Bella Agency. There was one more. I, I can't remember which one. But our first meeting was Wilhelmina, New York. And me and my brother never been into a meeting. What did you tell your parents? Like, what were you? You were just like, I'm leaving for New York. I believe I was 22 years old, 23. So I was still living at home with my mom. My my father passed away when I was five. So it was always my mom. And uh, she she was all for it. Like, hey, go follow your dreams. You know, you're good kids. Go, go make something happen. So I just told our mom, like, hey, we're going to New York, you know, well, first, we're going to our grandparents in Connecticut, which we always went to. But we're going to be going to New York. We're going to sign with the modeling agency. We're going to be models, mom. Like, we're going to do great. You know, like that type of thing. And she said, all right, kids, like, go do that. We talked to our mom every day. Okay. So I would, like, you know, check in. Hey, mom, we're going to New York today. 
this is what happened, you know. I'll always you're very close to your mom. Oh yeah, my mom is everything. She uh she did a great job raising my brother and I. Uh we've been through a lot, you know, our whole life. And our mom stayed strong and just kept being that amazing mom that has always been there for us. So what were you feeling when the camera first looked at you? I've always loved meeting people, taking pictures, being in that limelight and like being the center of attention. Like that was always me, you know, high energy personality. So when the cameras were in my face, I was like, Hey, this is starting to become real. Like, this is cool. And <laughs> I didn't really know a lot of poses back then. Cause you know, I was just fresh. It was brand new. I just remember like a couple moves here and there. And then she would be like, all right. Oh, that looks great. That looks great. And then I'm just like, all right, perfect. And you come to New York, you meet an agent. They like you. They send you to different agents, agencies. And then what? Yeah, so my first meeting with an agency was in, it was with Wilhelmina. And, you know, we walk in there and a few of the agents liked us, liked me. And then they had to make a full decision, like with everyone involved. And so there was like one person that said no. So, you know, they denied us. So that was one agency. And we were like, damn, like I walked out of that room and I'm just like, it's so tough. Like we're not getting signed with Wilhelmina. Then we went to one other. Why do you have this thing of getting into Wilhelmina? You know, back in the day when I when I was first starting, that was the, one of the biggest names in the modeling world that I I knew. It was like IMG Wilhelmina. Uh, I think Major was back then. Um, Wanted to get into the biggest agency. You know, I was like, go big or go home. It's like I want to be lined up with the biggest agencies. I didn't even have experience, but I just had the confidence and belief that I was able to do that. And then the agency started like shutting me down. It was like, no, sorry. Like, we're not looking for your type right now or you don't have what it takes for this agency. And these were things that I've never heard before. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Like, this is like, whoa, they really talk to you like that? Oh my gosh. So I went to another agency and it was like, hey, you guys are great, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna pass. And then the third agency was Bella Agency. Walked in there. Tom Winslow's the agent, Ray Volant, he's the president. And the bond there was great. So Tom, he was like, all right, we're going to make a decision. Give us about a week. So <laughs> I just remember me and my brother walking out of that agency, like, oh, I think it went well, like, oh my gosh. And then at this point, we we're going back to Connecticut to our grandparents because, you know, that was all we had was a few meetings. We're in Connecticut. My brother decides to go back to California. Um, I was like, you know, what? I'm staying out here. Like, I'm staying. I'm going to make this happen. So the agency, Bella, Tom reaches out. He's like, hey, I would love to see you and your brother. Can you come back to New York? The president's coming into the agency, and I would love him, for him to meet you guys. And I was like, call my brother, like, Steph, like, we have a meeting. Like, you left. You're in California again. I'm just going to tell him you have work, and I'm going to go to this meeting. I go into the agency. I meet Ray. I'm like, hey, Ray, how you doing? Hey, where's your twin at? You are walking around on the streets of New York, going to different agencies. What are you feeling at this point? My whole thing was like, I'm going to do all it takes to make it work. I'll live on the street. I'll stay on the ground. I'll make it. I wanted this bad to where I'm going to make it happen. And I was a little stressed. My brother was more like scared or more like, I'm going back to Cali. I'm not waiting. Like, forget this. You know? And I was, yeah, he, he was used to that. And I was more like, I'm an adventure. I'm going to go. I will stay across the planet if I have to make something happen so I just remember going into this agency by myself now and they're asking like where's your brother at and I'm like he went back to Cali but I'm here like I'm gonna you know I came for both of us and it went really well and they offered me a contract right on the spot and I was like I, I had like tears of joy I was like oh my gosh like, this is really I'm signed to an agency now like and I just you know remember calling my brother like hey I got us the contracts when you come back to New York you'll get yours but I'm signing mine and my grandparents ended up taking me out to dinner that night. Why was it so important, Derek, to Dominic to uh, have an agency? Uh, because I just thought that, you know, to become a model, you need an agent and you need an agency. And then once you have that, that's what gets you started. I was like, oh, my gosh, so that means I'm going to start getting opportunities now because I have an agent who's going to work for me and like help make things happen for me. Rather than, <clears throat> I didn't think of like me doing it by myself. Like I'm going to get these jobs by myself. I'm going to do this because that takes a lot more work. And I don't know 
I didn't know anything at that point of how to get a job. I didn't know of like casting networks. I didn't know of actors access. I didn't know of any of these things to where I could have potentially got myself work. Um, so I just thought, you know, meeting with the agency, getting signed is like the best way to go. What made you feel like you could live on the streets of New York to make it happen? That was, you know, 2013. And then I went back to California for some time, then came back to New York in 2015. And that was when we were living on my friend's floor in the Bronx uh, in his little studio apartment. It was just on an air mattress. He had his bed next to us. And I just, we were on, I was on his floor for like two months. The modeling wasn't happening right away. So I was looking for other work. So <clears> you have an agency now. Two years have passed and you're not getting enough work and you are in New York, but you're not, <clears throat> excuse me, making enough money to live on your own. So you're living at your friend's place on the floor with an air mattress. Yeah. What's going on in your mind? Are you thinking of running away and going back to your comfort zone? So that was 2013 when I first came out here. Then I left. I had to go back home to handle some things. I ended up staying out there. So I couldn't do any modeling. I was just in California handling this, you know, situation out there. What was the situation? It was just some some like court matter that I had to fight, you know, all this dumb shit that was going on and I had to like figure it out. So I went from signing with the agency to going back to California to then after all that cleared up in 2015, I came back to New York. And so again, like I had to start out fresh again. Oh, wow. And that was when I was on the floor for two two months, uh, getting into, you know, things again, getting things rolling. What would you tell someone who's coming to New York, doesn't know anyone, but has a dream? I would just say come, focus, don't get involved in any of the street things, street activities going on. There's, you know, there's a lot of people out here that will intimidate you, that they know you're not from here, so they'll try and, like, you know, start things with you. That was an experience I had too. <clears throat> but I just tell people, look, keep your head on straight. Keep pushing forward. Don't get involved in anyone's business. You know, a lot of people out here aren't your friends. You know, they're just, it's a street thing. It's like New York, hard, rough. But if you can make it through New York, you can really make it anywhere in the world. It, it really toughens you up and it shows you things that you might not ever see before. So I'll just say, stay focused. Why don't you tell us about your first casting? I know it could be intimidating. So tell us, share that experience with us. It was for uh, Coca-Cola and it was a commercial. <laughs> so it was, uh, <laughs> it was a commercial. And like, I was like, you know, pictures, we're going to, you know, audition model. You know, I didn't know it was like some acting involved now. So that's what caught me off guard. They're like, they had us do some sort of script in front of the camera laugh and like haha be happy and at first you know I didn't really know how to do that I was like I didn't know how to fake laugh or like you know like act like I'm enjoying the moment it was more like I gotta try and do this in front of camera with someone behind it like that's kind of oh my gosh like I'm, I'm pretty nervous but anyways I got through it and then as these castings kept coming I'll just get better and better did you land the coca-cola job I didn't land the coca-cola job how was that how did you feel? Uh, you know, after the audition and not landing the Coca-Cola job, I just was like, all right, like, I guess, you know, I'm not going to book everything. You know, let me see what I did wrong and maybe try and get better. And I just started practicing on my own, like different moves in the mirror. Haha, <laughs> fake, that fake laugh is everything because it shows the smile, it shows the happiness. Punch after punch after punch after punch, but you just kept on standing up again. Of course. And then I remember my first job I booked. You know, it was it was for Lyft. So I was so excited that I booked this job and I was living in the Bronx at the time, but I had to be up at like, I thought it was 6 a.m. I'm like, dang, I had to be up early. It's my first job. I got to make sure I'm on time. I get to this trailer at like 5.30 in the morning and there's people there, but I walk in and they're like, what's your name? I'm like, Dominic. And I was like, I'm here for the Lyft shoot. And they're like, Tommy, if you're like 12 hours early, your shoot's not until 6 p.m. <laughs> I was like, what? So I didn't have all the money to be coming back and forth from the Bronx to New York, to the city. And, and I, wait, hold, hold, hold that thought for a second. 
Yeah. Like you say you didn't have all that money from Bronx to the city. I just want everybody to know Bronx is not that far, but it does cost what? 10, 20 bucks? In an Uber, it'd be like probably 30 bucks, but. You have to accept the fact that you're going to get punched so many times. And your success depends on how many times you stand up. So after I showed up to this, this job 12 hours early and they were like, all right, Dom, we're not going to need you till 6 p.m. I was like, all right, well, thank you so much. I'll see you at six. And then I leave the trailer and I'm like, call my brother, like, Steph, I'm not going to come back up to the Bronx. Like, I'm just going to sleep in the park. I'm going to lay in the park and just sleep on the bench and like, just wait. <laughs> so I literally went to Washington Square Park right there yeah. and get on a bench and I was just laying there all day. And then finally, yeah. I kept looking at the time. I'm like, all right. I'm getting up. It's like 5.30. I'm going to go to the trailer now. And ended up shooting. It was the best. It was my, it was the, it was the most amazing feeling. I'm like, I'm in the car. You know, I have another person with me. The cameras are like coming through the window. There's like people in the front telling you like, all right, yeah, do that. You know, it was just something I was like, this is crazy. And then I was in Maine shortly after this shooting for Samsung. And my brother was on the train in New York and he sent me a photo of me on the billboard for Lyft. My very first job, it was finally out. And everyone started sending me this billboard. It was everywhere. It was in California where I'm from. It was in New York in the subway stations. It was everywhere. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Like one of the best feelings I ever had. Coming to New York, picking up an agency, uh, struggling for two years, doing this one job, getting onto the billboard, and now you're you're doing other bigger jobs and you're doing SAMHSA. How does that feel when you get into on the set of Samsung? You are you more confident? Are you as nervous as the first time or I was just feeling so much more confident to when I would have other castings, I would just go in confident. And me, I was always a confident person, but I guess I was only around like certain people and then when I started getting around random people, I just was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep being me and be confident and be that person I've always been. And it helped me. It just helped me keep booking jobs. I did the Samsung thing, Vera Wang, Zales. You know, I started booking a lot of stuff and I was like, hey, this is great. You know, and then on sets, I'll just be even more confident. Like, all right, guys. But I would always be like, how you guys doing? You know, happy Monday, happy Tuesday. Hey, it's, thank you guys for having me. You know, I just felt... You know what helped me through all this was like the people I looked up to growing up, like my role models and like how they act is how I wanted to be. And like, I thought that was the best way you can be for yourself was like how Dwayne Johnson does it or like Will Smith or like, you know, Michael Jackson was a legend, like talented perfectionist. Um, just certain people I looked up to was Kobe Bryant. You know, I was just like, all right, this is what they would do in this in the middle of this center of attention. I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to imitate them. And that's how I kind of became me. How did you get to be confident? I think it was just the way my mom raised me and my twin was like, you know, being in my small town and hearing things of like, oh, you know, our mom just always was like, hey, sons, you, you look amazing. You're handsome. You know, and then people would be calling us names and things and she would just always keep us up. And then I started looking up to certain people and being like, I kind of want to like do something like they would do. Or like I would look in the mirror and like pose and I was just like, be confident. You know, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do me. I don't care what people think, what I wear, how I am. I was always friends with everyone in high school. I would talk to the gothic people, the emos, the sports, the jocks, the, I didn't give it, I didn't care who you were. I was making it known that I'm cool with everyone here. And then I was just always that confident, big energy person, you know? So being confident and being nice goes hand in hand. I feel like that's just needed in life, you know, to be happy and give that positive vibe to someone. It's contagious, you know, and I think people in life, when they see that, it really like, hey, you light up the room or like, wow, I need to start doing something like that. It starts changing people in the way they feel. They're like, you know what? If he can do it, why can I do it? And I think that's what we need is happiness, joy, a little bit more love in this world, like, you know, like positivity and not so much negativity. Tell us the story between the agency that took you and the agency that rejected you. That would be Wilhelmina. And how did you get back over there? Bella was my first agency in New York. They gave me the opportunities. That's where I was booking Lyft and Samsung and everything. Thomas Winslow was family. He still is family to me. But in 2018, 
So three years later, I moved to Germany. I was living in Europe now. So I took it further. I was like, you know, I'm going to Europe. Um, I got my visa. I signed with a big agency in, in Germany, Colt Models, and I was with them for like three and a half years. What happened to why? Why do you want to go from New York to Germany? I'm going to do the same thing I'm doing in New York in Germany. And my mom was just so like, son, don't go to Europe. Like, come on. Like, no one's out there. Your family's not out there. I was like, mom, I'm going to go do this. Like, I'll be fine. When, and, and where's your brother at this point? He stayed in New York. Well, he's not going with you to Germany. No, no one came out there. It was just me. Literally, I would come here to visit, but that was it. So I was with Colt Models um, doing like car commercials. Now I'm Volkswagen. I'm doing like Nike and like all these cool clients out there. And I'm like, dang, I'm a full-time model now in Germany. I wasn't a full-time model in New York, but out there I was full-time. And I was like, hey, I'm, I'm full-time. So. <laughs> Good for you. So from there, I went to Cape Town, South Africa uh, in January 2020. Um, I, I was on stay. I was shooting a Volkswagen commercial in Cape Town 2019, December. And the people I was working with, they're like, you know what? You'd be great in Cape Town. Like, I'm going to connect you with this agency and maybe you can come on stay for like three months. So after the Volkswagen commercial, I go back to Germany. I reach out to this agency. I told my agent, like, hey, like, this is Ice Models in Cape Town. They're interested. Like, let's make that connection. So they ended up signing me, and I went to Cape Town for three months from uh, January 2020 to April 2020. That was the most interesting place I've ever been to. It was my favorite place. So I was at dinner with my agents uh, at this place called Clue Street House, and I was out back talking to one of these other models. And, you know, my agent was talking to this, this guy, and these people out there, it was, and he called me over. He's like, Dom, come here, come meet these people. So I go over there. I'm like, hey, how you guys doing? I'm Dominic. You know, nice to meet you. And they're like, hey, we heard you you modeling. You've done some reality TV. And I was like, yeah, you know, back in California, back in New York, I was doing modeling and, you know, some TV. And now I'm out here, I'm modeling. And they're like, well, hey, you should go talk to that guy because he he's with this big show in Poland, this big TV show. And I was like, all right, I'm ready for more TV. I go up, introduce myself. His name is David Walensky, and he's like one of the judges on Top Model in Poland. So I ended up, he had me do this interview on the spot. I was like, hey, I'd be perfect for Top Model. I have a twin. You know, we would crush it. I'm confident. I have the look. I have what it takes. And I was just, my confidence was even more talking to him from everything I've been through in New York to now in Germany to now in Cape Town just helped me get boosted up. My confidence was like, hey, I know how to interview now. He ended up, all right, let's go. Tell me why you're ready for Top Model. He filmed me right there on the spot with his iPhone, sent it to production. They're like, hey, we love him. And I was like telling all my friends out there, like, guys, I'm going to be on, I'm going to be on Top Model in Poland. I'm going to, I'm going to be on there. And all my friends out there are like, Dom, how are you going to be on a Polish TV show? You don't even speak Polish. I was like, I just know that it's going to be. I'm confident. I know what I just did. And it's going to happen. <clears throat> So all the doubt, you know, I stayed positive. And this is during COVID. This was right when it came in 2020, March, COVID came. And the, the lockdown started happening. I ended up getting stuck in Cape Town for an extra few weeks. And then I finally go back to Germany, stay in contact with this connection that I met from Poland. I'm like, hey, what do I do next to get on this show? What do I need to do? Blah, 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 blah. He's like, do the casting, do the this, do the that. Finally, I got invited to the casting for this TV show. So I'm telling my brother, like, Steph, like, we're supposed to go together. He didn't have his passport. He didn't listen to me at the time. And I was like, all right, I got to go do this for both of us. So I went to Poland. Never been to Poland. <laughs> Never went. I went That'd to the cool. castle. I just, you know, I'm, I'm an adventurer. I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn a little bit of the language. I'm going to try and make it work. They're going to appreciate it. And I'm just going to be out there doing what I love, TV and model. So then I went to the casting in Poland and like you know they were like it was all four yeses I was so I started crying almost I called my brother my mom I'm like guys you know I, I'm gonna be on this tv show now and like I'm doing it for you guys because my mom and my brother at the time were the most important things to me ever it was always us three even before I went down that runway that was the first step was you got to do the casting down this runway in front of all the judges four judges before I went on the stage, I just remember saying, like, 
all right, I'm doing this for my brother, my mom. Like, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm doing it. Now let's go. It's go time. Went on that stage, did it. They loved me. It was, that was the best experience I've ever known. The reason why you are given the opportunity and all these amazing things is because you are never willing to give up. And I think that's a great quality in you. And I think that's a quality that everybody should have. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's the key. How are you back and, in New uh, York? You know, like, yeah, so Poland was incredible. I, that was really where I started becoming a celebrity. You know, we filmed the show. I was one of the most popular people out there um, from Top Model, season nine. And I was, you know, it was like, I started getting messages. My following went crazy. I had like from 18,000 followers all the way up to 193,000. I made it to the final. I was the first one to see the stage. And like, I had people voting for me. I went to like, you know, Good Morning America. It was like Jin Dobre TVN out there in Poland. It's like their Good Morning America. I went with the three other contestants that were in the finals and like they're interviewing us and it was just paparazzi. Like it was just, it was a dream come true. I was like, I really made it. Poland's my spot. I'm gonna really, you know, I had people messaging me like, Dom, you're really changing us out here. We need your positive energy. Like, like we hope you win. And then uh, the day before the final, we were at rehearsal. And I remember getting out of rehearsal. And uh, yeah, the, I got, I ended up this, something from my past came up to where it really, these people that were like trying to ruin my success always since I went through this thing in my hometown, finally put something out, top model saw it. They probably been holding on to it for months. And then like, they probably just didn't want me to win out there because I'm not from there. But they ended up putting out my old stuff that I went through court for and all this stuff. And then I got disqualified from the final. Uh, I lost like, I gained 30,000 followers in one night from it. And then I lost like, I've almost lost 100,000 followers in like two years. Wow. These people really, it really messed me up. I was actually depressed for like two months. I didn't get to go to the final. I I I probably would have won. Like it was that big to where I had um people calling me like, hey, what's the story? But then top model, they sent someone into my room to like make sure I didn't talk about it, talk about what was going on. They're like, Dom, like you'll be fine. Like we'll let it go by for a week, you know. And I was trying to be respectful. Like, all right, I trust you. I believe in you. I've been with you guys for like nine months, whatever. Like you have my back. And then them telling me not to go on my phone and talk about what happened in the past. And this lady's making sure I wasn't going on my phone. And then I finally start realizing, I'm like, I should have just talked. I should have told people my story and what I really went through in my hometown because it was corrupt. Basically, they were bringing up your past yeah. and, and, and making you look like a bad guy. Made me look terrible. But you know what? What these people keep showing and they tried doing it on the first TV show I was on, but the network didn't let it happen. I was able to do three seasons. Every ep I was on every episode. The network wasn't letting that happen. <clears throat> then in Poland, it's like a different thing. It's like they look at certain crimes a different way to where it's like they don't understand the full story of like, I went to trial, but I didn't get to testify because all of a sudden one of the jurors didn't show up. And then I had to take some deal. And it was like at the sentencing date when I was being in front of the judge and he was telling me what this deal was, the lady that couldn't make it on the jury panel the day of my trial was now at the sentencing day next to the mom who was like accusing me of some shit. And like, it was just so wrong. I ended up telling the cop like, hey, she was not at the trial, but she's here now. Yeah, it's over now. Go sit down. Like they were just treating me like a criminal. And I'm like, I'm not a criminal. Like what? That story is another story, but it's just the things I went through and then my the person I know who I am and that I would never do wrong in life and never have done wrong in life is like, that was one of the speed bumps where I was like, okay, I might go to jail for a minute. I'm getting out and I'm going to go make things happen. And I did make everything happen. All my dreams came true. But the 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 craziest thing is I can't live the dream that I have because these people will always be trying to bring me down. And it, what really showed me was when I was in Poland and I was really a celebrity and like I had all these deals lined up and 
to have all that taken from me because of that it was like I was a celebrity I still am out there but like I'm not able to live that celebrity lifestyle with success because that happened and these they let these people keep talking about my name and like making my name look bad you know so it's it's a lot that I still have to deal with that I just keep like let's go that basically brought you back to back home after two months of like me like sad and not being on my phone not being on social media really messed that was the first time where i was like i'm not good like this is crazy you come back to new york and how do you land up with wilhelmina so i reconnect with who is now my fiance malika miller she runs an agency and we reconnect and you know i'm telling her like my my um, experiences in europe that i've been doing a whole lot she's like let's try and let's try and like you know have you gives you some meetings like maybe with some other agencies and I'm like all right like let's wait a little bit but like I'm gonna talk to Tom at Bella and like tell him like you know all the things I've been doing is more fashion I've done runway I was in Milan I've done things that I never did before so I had a meeting with Tom at Bella and I told him like hey Tom you know I love you I'm so thankful for you I haven't been here for three and a half years but I just wanted to like try and venture out and try something new and like maybe get with the new agency he was like all right, Dom, he's like, go spread your wings. You know, I, I'm wishing you the best. One day, just come back and be with me. And I was like, all right, Tom, I really appreciate that. Like, we're in touch still. So my first meeting was Wilhelmina. You signed with Wilhelmina? You know, they denied me before when I first started, but then I had a meeting on Zoom. I went, I had a great conversation with Jessica Wilhelmina, and then I ended up asking. I was like, so what are we going to do? Are we going to, are we going through with this like what, what what's next and she was like i would love to have you dom i'm gonna send the contract over and i'm in my room like oh like i'm with wilhelmina now they denied me twice before and now i'm with them which is like being with one of the biggest agencies in the world is like incredible to say that you know i'm rep by wilhelmina new york it's it's huge hey, your story is absolutely incredible I think your story is amazing. It's like, you know, you just don't want to give up. <laughs> Tell me something about your personal life. So now you met Malika and you've met Malika in the past. And so what made you say, okay, she's the girl for you? So it made me say Malika Miller was the girl for me. My everything was, we had, we had a time together, uh, like in 2018, where we spent two and a half months together. And that was like every day I helped her move to Miami. Like we started like connecting more and like we got to know each other more. And the the feeling was just, wow, it was like best friend vibe. The energy was there. So I always knew I was like, Malika Miller is always a special person to me. Even when I was in Europe, I would always think of her and be like, I'd write her a message still like, hey, I miss you. I see you killing it. Keep it up. The same person I've always been. But when I got back to New York, I reached out to her and I, we met up again after not seeing each other for three years. And it was like, we picked up where we left off, the happiness, the smiles, the like best friend vibe. So I was like, all right, that's my person. Like that is my wifey, I'm gonna marry her. And then I would tell her friends and like everyone like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a ring on it. Like that's my everything. And when you know, you know, it's because you don't know, you're not over here looking at other women. You're not over here like messing around. It's like, that is my queen. I really say Malika Miller is my queen. I treat her like a queen. She's my everything. I think that you guys make an amazing couple. And I think you guys, you're good together. So now you are not only a model at uh, Wilhelmina, but you're also doing uh, some kind of work or business partner with, with Malika at an agency. I'm now a mother agent for all the male models that come through sign. And she is the women with the agent for the women and the owner so it's cool that we get to work alongside with each other and be that best team that we could be to where yeah we're gonna crush it together we're doing great you know it's the best part not good to have how does it work out uh dominic being with uh, malika 24 7 i love it I, i'm that side of person where i could be with her 24 8 if there was eight days but uh no yeah i could be with her all all day every day uh I think when I back in the past, it was more like she would be like, oh, uh, you know, we're we're together too much. We need some space, you know, this and that is like I was like, wait, what? We don't need space. Like, I love this. We can do this. And now it's more like I right, we, we love being around each other. It feels weird when we're not with each other. 
like and the work everything works well together like sometimes she'd be like well you know when we work together it might not be the best and this now i'm like yeah that's what some people will say but i was like that doesn't mean we have to be that way like we could make it work whatever we choose to do we'll make it work and that's what we do and it's the bomb it's the best what is in dominic's future i want to open my own little restaurant and i would love to have a reality show out of that because you know doing reality tv and being under other people's tv shows it's amazing but it's like why not me have my own to where i'm just going to try and make that happen you know i'm going to i'll do what it takes to make it happen and uh, that that has to start with getting the spot first getting the piece of space first and then having the storyline written up but I already started all that. I already, you know, so that's that'd be a goal that I would love to accomplish for sure. This is going to happen in New York. Start in New York and then venture out to different cities like maybe Miami, maybe Atlanta, LA. You know, just start one. And the first one has to be in New York. And then from there, get it up and running. And then take a, take a move there, get that up and running. And just, you know, put my life story into it what I've been through, people that know me from other TV shows, our story from there. You know, I just want to incorporate a lot of that. That I am half Italian, so maybe I'll be having my Uncle Mike or someone teach me his sauce recipe and, like, this is how I do it in Italy. You know, like, I want to just have something for me and my family that that no one's ever done for us. Like, I want to be the one to start my own business for the family to where – you know, it could go on for a legacy. Like my kids will have this, my, their kids, you know, I want it to be like that. I want to start something like that. Tell me a little bit about your mom, Dominic. She just turned 64 on the 7th of November. So happy birthday again, Ma. I love you. She, so she grew up in California. She was born in uh, California and raised us in this small town because she thought it would be best for us. She didn't want us in the Bay Area. She thought it was a little bit rough out there. So she raised us. Uh, she's been through a lot. You know, she lost her dad at a young age and one of her brothers at a young age. But she has been the best mom she could be for us always. She, We lost our dad when we were five. And she always was like both parents, like mom and dad. But always the like we were raised by our mom. So it's more I have more of those traits, like the love, the like softness, like, a, you know, like I'm that. But she also showed us the way. She had a man in her life named Bill, and he was our stepdad. And he ended up, he broke his back, and then he ended up getting depressed and committed suicide when we were 12. And so she's been through a lot as well as us. But our mom always said, three the hard way, sons. Like, it's me, you, and your brother. We'll make it. Guys, we've been through a lot. Let's be strong. She was always, like, that positive person that's like, we're going to be okay, you know, we're, we weren't rich. It was like she was working and making it work. Whatever we wanted, she would get for us or like help us live the life that was the best life for us to grow up. She made it. She made everything possible for us. So she's everything. I'm, she's still working to this day. So that's why it's like it bothers me seeing her work. So I'm like, oh, I just got to get there and like get her out of work. What an amazing story. What an amazing human. You're full of strength. Thank uh, you. And I hope this inspires other people who are interested in coming to New York, whether they're coming for modeling, acting, or, you know, opening a pizza store, a restaurant, it doesn't matter. But what what you are telling people and what you've told me today is never give up. And I think that's what New York is all about. So thanks for getting on. Uh, I wish I had more time to speak with you. Me and too. <laughs> But, you know, one day, and I am coming to your wedding, so maybe, not that day, but maybe we'll have dinner. Yeah, you wedding. are coming. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> Dominic, thank you so much. Hey, thank you so much, you jazz. Have an amazing day. You too. And uh, to everyone that's tuning in, live, learn, and grow each day, every day, and never give up. Let's go. Thank you, you jazz.